All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing concepts and principles with B3, identify and distinguish between respondent and operant conditioning. Now we're gonna keep this as simple as possible because respondent conditioning can become quite confusing when you're first looking at it, but just focus on the idea that we are pairing an antecedent stimulus with other stimuli, and then we're trying to elicit a reflex. Operant conditioning, on the other hand, is what we do every day. We're learning and teaching through consequence manipulation. So we're going to keep both of these very simple and straight to the point where we're only going to focus on what we think is essential. As always, please subscribe if you haven't already. We put out three BCBA videos a week, as well as all of our RBT content. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for some leading BCBA exam prep. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So let's start here. What are, what is respondent and operant conditioning? Well, they are fundamental processes that lead to stimuli, evoking, abating, eliciting behavior, as well as reinforcing or punishing behavior. It's how behavior persists. It's how we change behavior. And you can see we use different wording, evoking versus eliciting. And what's the difference? Respondent conditioning elicits reflex responses. It's very important for your exam that you know the difference between eliciting the reflex or evoking the behavior. You want to associate elicit with respondent conditioning and evoke with operant. Now, you might say, well, that's very specific. Why do we have to be so specific? Because on the exam, you're trying to be as by the book as possible. So you want to use the correct language. When we're talking respondent conditioning, we are eliciting reflexes. When we're talking about operant, we're evoking behaviors or we're reinforcing or punishing behaviors. That's the main difference between these two types of conditioning. So let's start with respondent. Now, respondent is also called classical conditioning. That's the Pavlov dog that everyone knows, right? With the bell and the food and the salivating. This is our classical conditioning. As behavior analysts and ABA practitioners, we don't deal much in respondent conditioning because we're all about consequences, reinforcement, punishment, extinction, and how those are going to shape future behavior. In respondent conditioning, we're looking at things like neutral stimuli and pairing them with unconditioned or conditioned stimuli. So for example, if we see the sun, which is our unconditioned stimuli, and it makes us squint, which is our unconditioned reflex, we can start pairing things with the sun to create a conditioned reflex. So if I take a neutral stimulus and I start pairing that with the sun, whatever it might be, maybe I hold up a two of spades, a card, right? So I'm pairing the two of spades with the sun. Eventually, if I do it enough, we can create a conditioned stimulus and evoke a conditioned reflex. And already you can see respondent conditioning if you're just looking at it for the first time, seems confusing, but it's not. Just think about what is your unconditioned stimulus? What is your unconditioned reflex? And then what are you pairing it with? Whatever you pair it with becomes a conditioned stimulus and evokes a conditioned response. A conditioned stimulus will always evoke that, or excuse me, a conditioned reflex. A conditioned stimulus will always evoke a conditioned reflex. And again, very important that we're using the word reflex with response, respondent conditioning. Reflexive or reflex is associated with respondent conditioning because respondent has to do with things like sneezing, crying, sweating, these involuntary reflexes that are evoked by these antecedent stimuli. Now, huge difference between respondent and operant conditioning is no consequences are involved in respondent conditioning. It is simply a stimulus, I should say reflex, see even I do it sometimes, but we want to be specific, stimulus reflex relationship. And again, why are we being so specific? Because on your exam, they want you to be specific. In practice, 
you're not going to really deal much with respondent conditioning. But as an analyst, you've got to know the difference. You've got to know the language. No consequences are involved in that stimulus reflex relationship. So for example, one of my favorite examples, Jim plays a noise on his computer and offers Dwight a mint. So Jim is pairing the noise with the mint. After doing this several times, Dwight starts to salivate when he hears the noise because that mint caused salivation after pairing the noise now causes Dwight to salivate. Once you get your mind around what you're pairing and what that paired stimuli is going to elicit, this becomes very, very straightforward. Okay, operant conditioning, which is what we work with, what we work on, how we design behavior change, how we think about teaching and learning in ABA. So operant conditioning is the basic process for operant learning. Behaviors are strengthened or weakened based on consequences. We're all about our consequences. How will that consequence affect and shape and influence future behavior? So if we're dealing with operant conditioning, we're looking at the SRS contingency, the A antecedent behavior consequence condition. Uh, consequence uh, contingency, right? So we have a stimulus followed by a response followed by a stimulus. There is a consequence with operant conditioning. Operant conditioning can lead to stimulus control. How? Well, if we, let's say, reinforce a behavior enough times in the presence of this antecedent stimulus, then eventually the antecedent stimulus is going to have stimulus control over the response. We're getting a little more complicated now, right? This is why the fundamentals are so important because now we need to think about how our stimuli and our responses are related. How can we create stimulus control? This is going to be important when we get to things like differential reinforcement and some of our other strategies. So operant conditioning can lead to stimulus control after repeated delivery of consequences in the presence of that antecedent stimuli. Operant conditioning is simply what you're doing every day when you're reinforcing or punishing your client. That's all operant conditioning is. So for example, a child receive, receives praise for completing homework, increasing the likelihood of doing homework in the future. That is operant conditioning. A couple key takeaways. Respondent conditioning involves automatic reflexive behaviors learned through association. So things that just are a reflex, we don't have control over, heartbeat and sweating and blinking, and it's a stimulus reflex relationship. Opera conditioning involves voluntary behaviors shaped by reinforcement and punishment. And we use the word voluntary very loosely here, right? Because we know behavior is controlled by the environment and evoked and abated by the environment. But these behaviors are what we actually engage in. They're not reflexes, they're actual behaviors. Opera conditioning contains a consequence. It is that SRS relationship. Okay, this topic can be a little overwhelming. I think this is the first topic that becomes a little more difficult. Take your time, understand respondent conditioning first, right? How those unconditioned stimuli and conditioned stimuli relate to our reflexes. And for opera conditioning, don't overthink it. It's what you're doing every time you deliver a consequence. You are teaching whether a behavior should continue or not. And in the process, developing stimulus control with your antecedent stimuli. As always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. Like, subscribe for all of our content, including our three videos a week, plus RBT material. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.